To open an account, please. Oh, are you saving for something? Yep, my money's gonna save the world. We're gonna turn wind into energy! And even make it possible for the sun to power stuff. We're making farms more efficient. And turning gas into electric. No exhaust pipes, see? <laughs> We're doing all that. We sure are. Hi there, my name is Emily Brockpay and thank you for joining me for printmaking from nature. Today we're going to be learning how to make prints from things that we found outside. For example, leaves um, and other plants like cedar, uh, this was made with a dandelion, so different plants that you found outside. So the main thing that you're going to need for printmaking in nature is uh, scrap paper, just to be uh, working on your work surface because it's a little bit messy. You're gonna need blank paper. Um, you could use a roller or a paintbrush, uh, any kind of paint that you have. And then you also need leaves. All right, so I'm just in my backyard and I am picking some leaves to use for my printmaking. So I've got a little maple leaf here. I'm gonna try one of these. So the big thing, you just want to make sure that you know what you're picking. So um, 
definitely make sure that you know the plant before you pick it. And something that has like a nice vein on it, like this, you're probably going to see a little bit better when you're doing printmaking with it. I'm going to take another one. I've got some strawberries in the wild here. So these are all strawberries. So I'm gonna do a strawberry leaf. And then I've got some periwinkle there. And then I'm gonna grab cedar. There's my cedar. I can't remember if this is a violet, but these leaves are nice for printing. And if you pick them or if you cut them with like a little bit of a longer stem, it gives you something to pull your print up from. So you can pick them or cut them however you want to do it. Uh, so once you've gathered your supplies, we're going to start, um, I'm using just like a piece of plexiglass, but you could use a plate, uh, you know, anything that you can wash afterwards. Uh, you could even do it on your scrap paper if you wanted. Um, so the main thing I found was that it was useful to have extra pieces of sort of, you know, newsprint or, uh, this is just sort of like a thin craft paper, uh, to press down on your leaves, uh, just to make sure that you really get all the veins pressed down. So next I'm going to show you up close what I'm doing and I really hope that you enjoy it. So I've got my leaves and my supplies that I'm going to use. Now I'm using mostly leaves, but you could also try, you know, bark if you found some bark. And I'm thinking of trying like a dandelion flower. And you could use a roller. If you have a roller or a sponge, I'm going to try just with a paintbrush. And you want just like a really thin amount of paint. So you don't want it really thick. And then I'm going to do it on sort of what I'm calling the back side of the leaf um, because that's where you can see the most veins. And then you're just gonna dab some paint on there. And it's good if you have some paper down just because it's a bit messy. So just thin amount of paint all over the leaf. All right, and then you're gonna flip it over onto your paper, and then you just press it down. You could also put a piece of paper on top if you wanted to press it down completely. And I kind of press around where the veins are. And then you just lift it up. So there you go. I'm gonna try the dandelion. So I'm gonna thin out the paint. just dab dandelion right into the paint. You can see it's kind of picking up some paint on the petals there. Getting lots of paint and then I'm going to it kind of looks like fireworks. so far. So if you're using the roller, sort of the same, you just want to make sure that it's really thin, the paint. And then for this, 
Now you could roll right onto the leaf, or I've had a lot of success with just putting the leaf right into the paint and just kind of dabbing your finger. So dab, dab, dab. So I'm getting paint all over that leaf. Now, if you have tweezers, you could use tweezers just to lift up the leaf if you wanted. I've just been using my finger to pull it from the stem and put it right here. as many colors as you want, as many different leaves as you want. I really like these ones. This is plantain. It's actually, this is a, a healing plant. If you have bug bites, my papa used to like squish it all up in his hand and then he used to rub our mosquito bites with this. So it's, it's quite a useful plant and it's got some nice veins. So I'm going to take that and then go put it here. There we go. And then the last I'm going to do, I think, is the cedar. And the cedar, this is where I might use the paper to press it down because I find if you want to really get a good print, you need to really press it down. So I'm going to use, I think, the yellow and the red together to make sort of an orangey color. And then I'm going to paint the back like very liberally. So you can put a little bit more paint on it. So I've got quite a lot of paint there. Okay, so I'm going to put the cedar down. And I'm going to put the paper on top, so I'm just pressing down. And I'm going to lift up the paper. Oh man, that's so cool, Mama! Yeah, it's cool? Yeah. There, you can kind of see the cedar. So I might do it again with a little bit more paint. Okay, so we're going to do some cedar in blue. So again, you just kind of want it thin. Just gonna paint like right onto the cedar. The cedar you want it a little bit thicker. You're using cedar just because it, I don't know if it's absorbing the paint, but just a bit different than the leaves. It seems to be a little bit more paint. I'm doing it in blue, so hopefully you see the color a little bit better. Okay, so I've got the paint all over my cedar. I'm going to put it like this, and then because it's sort of a lot of paint, I'm going to put my scrap paper on top, and then I'm going to press down on the cedar, and I can see the paint coming through, so hopefully that means, there we go. So that's the cedar. And then I'm going to do the strawberry leaf. And I'm going to try it the same way. I'm just going to paint right onto it. So I'm just sort of holding the stem. Veins. 
strawberry leaf. Put it in this corner. I'm gonna use my scrap paper again. going there now. I think I'm going to do a little bit of yellow and then it's going to be done. All right, so we're going to do two more of these. I'm going to use, I mean, sort of a green color because I thought the yellow on its own might not show up that well. So I've showed you how to do something that's a little bit more detailed with lots of leaves, lots of different things, but you could also do a print that's more simple if you want, if you haven't had time to collect a lot of leaves, anything can look really beautiful. So on this piece, I am just going to do two leaves. So I collected these leaves from my tree outside, so I'm just going to paint it on. You could use a paintbrush, you could also use a sponge, you could use your roller, um, you could use your finger, really anything depending on how messy you want to make it. So this is my paper here. So I'm going to do two. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to put like a little bit of, on the stem so you can get a bit of the stem. You could also use tweezers to pick up your leaves if you don't want to be too messy. And then I'm going to take my scrap craft paper and I'm just going to put it on top and I'm going to press down like this. And then I'm going to lift it up. So there you go, that's one. And I'm going to add one more, just really simple. You could do it. I really like these sort of more simple ones um, in color, in other colors too. Like I've done ones in gold that I thought were really beautiful and simple. So I'm just gonna place this here. And I'm gonna press down on my leaf with my scrap paper. I'm just going to press down on my leaf with my scrap paper. Here we go. And then I'm going to lift it up. And there we go. And there's 
an example of one that's quite simple, but I think really beautiful too. Okay, so the last one I'm gonna show you is the fern. Now I will say the fern is a little bit harder just because um, the leaves are a little bit more delicate. So just be really gentle when you're applying your paint if you're using fern. And like I mentioned before, you kind of want to keep the paint sort of as thin as possible. It just prints a little bit better when it's not too thick. And I'm just sort of gently going in the in sort of one direction. So I'm just getting thin layer and I can kind of feel that the leaves are getting saturated with the paint so I'm gonna stop there and then again I'm gonna lift it up actually that looks pretty cool too and I'm gonna put it on my paper I'm just gonna try to get the leaves spread out now if you had some tweezers this is where tweezers might be helpful just in spreading out the leaves all right i think that's pretty good so i'm going to take my craft paper and i'm going to put it on top and i'm just going to press it out like this delicate I maybe could have put a tiny bit more paint but I'm quite happy with how that turned out and I'll do one more on the other side so I'll do another example of the maple leaf so the maple leaf it's the same idea you want to sort of I like to start at the base and then pull out towards the tip so that you don't crumple up the, the leaf too much And new leaves, new leaves I find are a little bit more delicate. So just be kind of careful when you're doing it. There we go. I'm gonna put that on my other side. Again, I'm using my scrap cloth paper. I'm going to put it down on top. I'm just going to press. So I'm just putting my craft paper on top and I'm just pressing down. And then I can lift up. And there you go. So what I really like about printmaking with nature is it tells a story about the time that I made these prints. So right now it's spring, all of the leaves are coming out for the first time. I used a strawberry leaf because right now it's strawberry season, all my strawberry plants have flowers, uh, cedar which grows in my garden, new that sort of new cedar there. Uh, the maple leaves for my tree are just out and my linden tree. And also it's fern season, so the fiddleheads are done and the leaves for the ferns are now out and really beautiful. As some of you will know, a lot of our plants have, you know, cultural significance like strawberries for strawberry season, the plantain which we use, which is a healing plant, cedar, which is a sacred plant. A lot of Canadians feel a connection to the maple leaf so our prints can tell us a little bit about ourselves uh, and also some of our teachings. So thank you so much for joining me for Printmaking with Nature. 
I really look forward to seeing what you came up with, whether you decided to use a lot of leaves or whether you did something more simple. I really hope that you're able to share it on social media through the Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival. If you share it on Instagram, please use the hashtag SSIF art so that I'm able to find it. I look forward to seeing what you came up with. Um, please remember that whatever you did, it tells a story about this time. Um, the pandemic has been really interesting for everyone. Um, and I know that we all look forward to it ending, but you know, these prints will remind me of this time and uh, being present with all of you virtually uh, together, but apart. Thank you so much for participating and I look forward to answering any of your questions. Hi, sorry, I was on mute. Um, so thank you so much for participating in this workshop. I hope you had lots of fun. I'm gonna take some questions now. Um, so while the workshop was on, my kids were actually doing the workshop. So here you can see this one was done by my son, Christian, who's eight. And this one was done by my son, Victor, who's four. He had a little bit of help. So anybody can do this workshop. Um, and then we had a question about what if you don't have paint? So if you don't have paint, there's still other things that you could do. Um, for example, you could collect leaves and you could trace them with a pencil. Um, I did like an etching. So you would put the leaf, you put your paper on top of the leaf and then you can rub it with a pencil and you'll get sort of an outline of the leaf. So just something a little bit different. And then you can kind of erase around if you want more detail. Um, another thing you could do if you don't have paint, you could um, find bark. This was bark that fell off a tree um, that my son Christian collected. Please don't pull it off, but if you see it on the ground or um, you can pick it up and collect it. And then you could cut shapes out of it and you could glue that down. Um, the workshop I did last year was finding things from nature and gluing it onto a surface like canvas or wood um, or paper. So those are some other options if you don't have paint. Um, so we have some questions from a class at Norway Junior Public School. Uh, so this is from grade two and grade three. So Mia in grade three asked, what made you interested in doing printmaking as a form of art? Um, so my dad actually is an artist also, and he does a lot of printmaking. So I learned how to print um, from a really young age. So I started um, with stencil printing and then lino cuts. And then most recently I've started doing this printmaking from nature where I'm taking things that I found outside and printing them. Uh, Colby in grade two asked, why is the printmaking theme all about nature and what we find in nature? What made you decide to make nature the theme? Um, so a lot of the work that I do is inspired by nature um, because our traditional stories often are about living things that are in our environment. So most of my inspiration comes from traditional stories um, or things that I find in nature. Uh, learning how to make birch bark baskets um, has heavily influenced my work. Um, this is a traditional form um, of art, but it's, it has a simple design and it's made entirely from things found in nature. And part of what we do is we etch on it. I hope you can see that, but we etch on it. And sometimes it will have people or plants. So this sort of form of art really has inspired me a lot. Um, do any of your other family members also do printmaking? Is this a family tradition? Thank you, Lily in grade three. Um, yes, a lot of my family members are printmakers. So uh, my father, like I mentioned, and two of my sisters are also artists and they are also printmakers. So it is a family tradition. And as I just showed you, my own children have started learning how to do printmaking. Um, and so I'm hoping that future generations will also do this kind of printmaking. So we have another question from Zach in grade eight. Why did you decide to become an artist? So since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be an artist. I actually wanted to be an artist and a farmer. 
Um, but I changed my mind when I found out that farmers have to get up really early. Um, but I still continued on with the dream of being an artist. So I've been practicing art since I was small um, with my dad and with my mom and other family members who are artists. And I went to university and I also studied art in university. So um, it's been a long time that I've been practicing art. Uh, here's a question from Dave in grade 10. Why do you use natural paints and objects from the land instead of oil paints? So this is a great question. Um, I've done oil paintings in the past, but oil paint takes a long time to dry. And so I found when I'm working, I prefer to use other sort of paint mediums um, just because the process is a little bit faster. But oil paints are really cool. And if you ever have a chance to experiment with oil paints, I highly recommend it. Question three from John in grade six. How do you come up with your ideas of what you want to create? Sometimes my teacher says, today we are going to paint rocks, but I never know what to paint. Have you ever had that? Uh, so writer's block or artist block, that's true. Sometimes I'm not sure um, what I want to create. And so maybe for a time I'll just be sketching or I'll be looking around me what's happening in my home, or I'm inspired to learn something new. For example, uh, I learned how to make moccasins. So I was doing, learned how to do beadwork and how to make moccasins. And that sort of inspired me onto um, printing from plants because I was depicting plants um, and on my moccasins. Uh, so if you are having sort of an artist's block, uh, I would just look around you. You can draw things that are happening in your home. Um, things that happen every day are important to remember. It's all part of our history um, as an individual and as a family. How do you do natural paintings as well as printmaking? Uh, so natural paintings, which is what I did last year, um, I did paint on my canvas, but you could use wood or paper. And then I glued on top the natural things. So you can kind of see here. So this is from last year. Um, so you can press flowers and you can glue like cedar right on. And this, this is um, moss. So this is an example of my natural paintings. And then printmaking would be more like what we just did. So I printed the actual leaf. Uh, what materials do you use for natural prints? Um, so I think I explained in the video what I use for natural prints, um, but basically any kind of leaf, uh, you can use bark, anything you find outside, um, you could use for natural printmaking, and then you can use paint, you can flatten them and glue them right onto your surface, uh, whatever sort of inspires you the most. All right. So here's some more questions from a grade two, three class in Kingston. How many pieces can you create in one day? So this is a great question. It sort of depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing natural printmaking, I can do you know, several prints in one day. Um, for example, the day that I did the prints for the workshop, I did three. Um, and then, if I'm doing something bigger like basket making, when I did this basket, this took me um, several days. So this was over a course of several days um, to make the basket. And then it was another day to do the etching. Um, so it kind of depends on what I'm working on. I've also done beadwork. So this is also sort of art for nature. I've got the birch bark in the back and then I've got beadwork that I've glued on top. This also took me several days to complete the beadwork and then to adhere it to the canvas. What is your favorite piece of art that you've made? Um, so this study that I did with the birch bark um, started when I was learning how to make the baskets. Um, I didn't wanna waste any of the bark. So any bark that was left over, I started using it for this study. And I did several pieces like this beadwork piece. Um, but I think the piece that I really love the most is uh, Mamawi, which is, installed at Pimacy Station in Ottawa. It's an LRT station and there is a giant canoe um, made out of, a, <clears throat> excuse me, over a hundred canoe paddles and that's installed at the station. 
And one of my paddles is there along with all the paddles of the other artists. I really love that piece because it's got such a good sense of community and lots of people were able to participate uh, in creating that piece of art. So. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, who or where did you get your inspiration from? So like I mentioned, I'm from a family of artists, both on my mom's side and my dad's side. Um, so my dad is an artist and um, he's always done a lot of art with us on my mom's side. My grandfather was, was a photographer and uh, I had another aunt who was a photographer and an artist. Actually, I have several aunts who are painters and photographers and artists. So we grew up in a really creative household and my mom was always doing arts and crafts with us um, and working with us because, you know, we just loved art from uh, like a really young age, like from birth. <laughs> uh, here's some questions from uh, Madame Langdon's class, grade six class in Ottawa. How long have you been creating artwork? So like I just said, I've been doing it since I was quite small, um, basically since uh, I could like hold a paintbrush, I've been painting and creating art. Um, do I have any art pieces in museums? So this is a good question. Um, I don't think I have any art pieces in museums, but I do have artwork in private collections. Uh, I do have a painting at the Cultural Center in Kitakan ZB. And also, like I mentioned, Mamawi at uh, Pimacy Station. And I have an art piece uh, in federal government buildings. So I do have art sort of out and about. Um, the, the most accessible piece of art is at Mamawi Pimacy Station um, at the Breton Flats. Uh, what's your favorite medium to work with? Paint, beads, etc. cetera. Um, so I do enjoy beadwork a lot. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite um, art mediums. I also really enjoy basket making. I've made several baskets now. Um, I find it really uh, engaging to work with natural um, sort of bark because it, it's a little bit unpredictable. So you really have to um, be focused and paying attention when you're trying to like carve the holes um, to sew the basket together. And uh, yeah, so here's some of my beadwork. Uh, this is a baby Yoda. Um, and I was using leftover fur from when I made my moccasins. So I don't like anything to go to waste. So anything that can sort of reuse and recycle um, different products and uh, natural elements, I, I'm really into doing that kind of stuff. Uh, what inspired Emily to be an artist? This is from Sergei. Um, I think what inspired me to be an artist was sort of just this instant love of art. Uh, I loved going to the art galleries when I was younger. Um, growing up, we have art in the park. My mom used to take us to art in the park and we would go and see all different kinds of artists. And I think also having artists in the family obviously heavily influenced my love of art because we were our, always exposed to that at home. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. Do you make any of your supplies like paint or medium? I have not made paint before. I've done some natural dyeing um, using vegetables before. Um, the natural dye that I made was actually with beets. And so I, I dyed paper and different things, uh, paper and fabric. Um, but normally, no, I don't. I usually buy my paints, uh, you know, probably the supplies that I use that I've collected or um, obtained myself would be birch bark. Um, and sometimes I work with, uh, you know, beads and natural beads, like shells, um, those I can collect myself. What surfaces do you like to use for your artwork? Um, so I often do work on canvas. I've also done work on wood. I have made my own drums and I make my own baskets. Um, so uh, sometimes I like this piece here, it's glued on canvas. Um, so you've got canvas and then bark and then the beadwork on top. So sort of layered multimedia art. So here's some questions from a grade three class. Which printmaker inspired influenced you to take up printmaking? 
Um, so probably my dad is the greatest um, influence on me in terms of printmaking um, because he's the one who taught me how to do it. I did also take classes at the Ottawa School of Art when I was younger. So we did printmaking there also, but definitely working with my dad the biggest influence on me. Which forms, techniques of printmaking do you like to use? Probably lino cuts are my favorite. Um, it's basically like carving into a linoleum block. I also now use like a rubber material. So you carve out almost like a stamp and then I can print make at home quite easily that way. So that's probably my favorite um, form of print making, but I have been experimenting with the natural print making and I really, really like that too, just because I like to be able to see the sort of grains in the leaves um, and it's unique because I can really only use a leaf maybe once or twice um, before it would be sort of more challenging to print it with it again. Uh, what images do you like to create? So most of my images are inspired from traditional stories and sometimes my dreams. So this basket, I'm hoping that you can see it, but it's a tree and it's made of birds. And I had this dream about a tree um, and instead of leaves, it had birds. So uh, that inspired several paintings and this basket um, just because it was a unique dream and I'm still trying to figure out what it means. <laughs> so here's a question from Misha. Where did you learn about this kind of art? So natural printmaking, um, I just had the idea because I would, and I was trying to think of other ways that I could bring in a natural element. And so I started experimenting with leaves to see what would happen if I use the leaves directly instead of sort of tracing them and carving them out. Um, but I studied art in university. And like I said, I, I did classes at the Ottawa School of Art and then also workshops with my.
Hi, sorry, we were having a little technical issue, but I am back. I have a few more questions to answer. So thank you for your patience. Um, the last few questions I have are, have you tried using bugs or pine cones? This is really a cool idea. I have not used bugs or pine cones, um, but that would definitely be something that would be interesting to try. I think pine cones could make really interesting patterns. I have used cones on this sort of style of natural art making. So um, you could definitely experiment experiment with bugs and pine cones. Um, if you do, please share them online and tag me because I would love to see. Um, have you done different colors on the same leaf? So yes, I have. I don't think it was in the video, but I can show you an example. Um, so this is an example of one, this is a card I made. You can see it's sort of got this like gold yellow color on the inside and then red on the outside. So you can definitely mix your colors um, together on the same leaf if you want. Uh, experiment and try different things. That's how you get better and improve your printmaking technique. And the last question I have was, have you ever done printmaking on fabric for clothes? Um, I have done printmaking on fabric for clothes. I usually use um, a silk screen, which is a completely different sort of type of printmaking, but basically it's a screen and it's got a medium on it and you can put your images on it and then you expose it under light. And then when it, it sort of like bakes in your design and then when you wash it, um, it will wash out your design. And then you can put that on fabric and then use like a big squeegee and you pull it down and it will leave a print sort of like this. So silk screening is really cool. Um, I've definitely done it for clothes and bags um, quite often and that's really fun too. Um, so that is it for the questions, um, unless any questions are to come in in the next few minutes, but thank you so much um, for watching my video and for asking me these questions. It was really great. I had a lot of fun and I hope that you also had fun and that you enjoy experimenting with natural printmaking. Thank you so much and hopefully we see you next year. Bye.